And so we have this concept of the great mystery and, and we have practices that lead us right to that place. So that place is when you come to the end of your own resource. Um, we have a ceremony in which we dance for four days without food and water in the sun. And um, it's not humanly possible to do this ceremony. You, you literally, you cannot do it. And so there comes a moment in it always where you come to the end of yourself. You come to the end of your will. You come to the end of all the physical stamina you've tried to build up. And, um, and then what ends up carrying you actually is your prayer, your spirit, and your song. And then with that, you're met by the spiritual world. And the spiritual world will kind of pick you up at that point and sort of carry you to the completion. And um, so what a thing to have a human practice of, of bringing yourself purposefully to that place, you know. It's so powerful. I mean, I, the more I think about it, the more genius it appears to me. And and so what I've been saying is, you know, when, when you get to the end of your own resource, you fall against the mystery door. And sometimes that mystery door swings open. And when that happens, um, all these possibilities get revealed to you. And they allow you to live your life um, in a powerful way. Powerful, not powerful over others, but powerful in, in your ability to be in even deeper relationship with this place that we're in with with the, all of our animal relatives, with all of our human relatives too, and all of the spirit spiritual beings. Um, and sometimes it allows you to bring solutions to things that are taking place in community, right? And so um, I feel like we're at that place collectively right now. We're, we're falling against a mystery door. And so I just want to, to say to us that, that there are humans who cultivate that place. Modern world says... You're always supposed to be in control. And if you ever come to the end of your own resource, it's because you didn't plan well enough or you were undisciplined in some way. Well, hopefully by now we can see that this whole system has, has been said, uh, set up in such a way that it's been almost impossible for you to be able to, to meet the criteria to have food, clothing, and shelter. It's been very, very difficult for, for the vast majority of us. And it has nothing to do, again, with what the resources that are available. It's how they're being held or distributed and such. So it, it's not that we that we have failed. Um, it's that we have been giving our consent in some way to a system that, that has not allowed us really to be the child of this Mother Earth, that has interfered with what this Mother Earth would give her child to live. And to me, that's a very deep violation of spiritual law to interfere with what the mother earth would give to her child to live no one must enter no one must get in that in that relationship that's 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 wrong <laughs> and and yet it's been so prevalent in our construction so so one i just want us to maybe have a little bit more ease in this unknown and mystery that it's it's okay to be in that place and so for me you know the practice of, of meeting that mystery with, again, with honor, with grace, with um, courage um, and willingness is to go out and make offerings in the morning. I mean, that's, that's the way as to go out and face that rising sun. Ideally, you know, as soon as that, that, that round, beautiful star disc comes up above the horizon, you know, you're there to greet it in our, in our, in my cultures, I have two cultures. In Dene way, we offer white cornmeal in the morning, and then if you want to offer it in the evening, you offer yellow cornmeal in at sunset. And in Lakota way, we offer tobacco. So for me, I start out to the east in the morning, and I make an offering. I address all the medicine and holy beings and things I don't even know, but that which serves life, light, and love to the east. And then I turn to the south, and then I turn to the west, and then I turn to the north. And I make those offerings and I offer the ones above and I offer that down to the earth. And then I offer at the center and the Holy one within. So I'm doing seven directions and I just let them know what's on my mind. I let them know what I'm concerned about. I let them know what I'm working on. I thank them for things. We've been getting some rain all of a sudden 
Rain almost, rain's been having a very hard time getting over to where my mom lives for a long time. And now the rain has been coming. And so I'm addressing those things. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for those people that I, that I see on the news. And I'm wondering how they're doing. I have dear friends in Africa who are getting flooded out right now. And, um, you know, so I express those concerns. And in the last few days that I've been doing this, every single time the, the, the wind comes up to meet my words. It's, I, there's like, like the whole earth is responding to these, <coughs> excuse me, to these prayers. <coughs> uh oh. The whole earth is responding to these prayers. It's just, it's just phenomenal. It's almost like nobody's been praying in my mom's little suburban neighborhood for so long that the earth can't even believe I'm doing it. And they're just like, oh, my gosh, you know. And um, so, you know, this is a gesture that human beings have been doing for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It's a gesture that is recognized by the sacred hoop, by the winds, by the sun, by the water. And so, you know, I just encourage you to give that a try and to speak speak your questions. And And then... And then I would add, you know, I'm, I'm opening myself to be willing to receive the answer. Show me, you know, make that place in me to be able to really have a conversation with you. Whatever is blocking me in my mind, whatever is blocking me in my heart, as I'm standing out here hoping the neighbors don't see me, and I'm a little bit ashamed and embarrassed about what I'm doing, you know, help me to, to not let that be a deterrent for us to have this conversation. You know, like you just got to get as real as you can with it and and express yourself to that which serves life, light, and love and just see what happens. If you do this practice every day for 30 days, the whole the whole thing changes completely. It's complete you elevate this out of the human realm. You know, it's that thing you we cannot create we cannot solve a problem from the same place that it was created. So we have to elevate ourselves out of the human paradigm because we've been, we've been misled and we've been trampled on and by our own kind. And so let's seek that larger community and, and for once ask for their input, which is the earth community, the star community, the spiritual community. Mm -hmm. So would you call that a practice of prayer or would it be something else? I feel like it's the making of right relations. So in other words, if someone is like not a prayer person, <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it has to exclude you. It's, it's because there is clearly a whole community going on around us with sky and earth and trees and water, birds, everybody. And we say that, you know, the human beings were the last to arrive here on Earth. And that means that everybody else around us is our elder. And they're all doing their very best to teach us how to be here. But just like, you know, those uppity kids in, in the school classroom that always want to know better than the teacher, that's kind of how we've been. But what happens if we open up to these elders who live their impeccable lives in their thriving life design with such ease and grace and beauty. What happens if we inquire from them, how do I live my life impeccably with ease and grace and beauty? I'm open to hearing from you. Mm. 